play champion here for four. Get our automaton up to a 6-6. Six, six. Hey Dragonauts, Astro Slam here tapping out to talk about mono green artifacts. Just like you're going to want to tap on that subscribe button to stay updated on all the new standard best of three decks. And with that, let's get into mono green artifacts by USG Delivery. Mono green artifacts presents a very strong way to do two strategies, develop large creatures and a little bit of a whiteboard state, but then just end the game with even larger creatures and continually recursion of them. Starting off here, we have the Teething Wormlet. So every time we're going to play an artifact, this is going to get bigger by plus one, plus one, and we're going to gain life, which is fantastic. We're playing in artifacts. That's Patchwork Automaton specialty. That means it is also going to grow. Along with Gather Graders, as we're playing creatures, this is going to create treasures and potentially buff itself with multiple triggers. Adding this all together for a plus one, plus one modify synergy leans in so strong to the Ozolith, which is why we have it in the list here. The plus one plus one counters are going to add an additional, which makes the creatures grow even more. With the modified, that's going to let us do Kodama of the West Tree to tutor out our basic lands, accelerate our mana curve, potentially adding Kami of Whispered Hope for further plus one plus one synergy, and using all that big mana for something like a Portal to Phyrexia or a Clay Champion. Clay Champion is what we can use to further buff our entire board or just make itself absolutely massive by spending nothing but grain into it. With Portal to Phyrexia, we're going to continually get back our creatures either from our opponent's graveyard or our own, and for sacrifice on three of their own. When it comes to card draw, though, this is where Tawashi Guybot is quite nice to come into play. Uh, as long as we have modified creatures, that ability to draw a card will cost one less. We're able to basically, with four creatures, draw a card for free once a turn thanks to the Guybot. Falling in all that mana, uh, once we have our lands and everything with Karn Living Legacy, we can create some power stones make some more artifacts, get some more triggers, but use any excess mana we have for Karn to dig further into the deck to find just the right answer we need. We do actually have some bonus land synergy here in the list too with the Dranith Ruins, putting some extra plus one plus ones on non-humans, and all our creatures are non-humans, so that's definitely going to get happening. And with Megathens Gardens, we're going to get to make copy of an artifact we have with mana value X or less, which means we could potentially make more Portal to Phyrexias, copy a Guidebot, or copy something else that maybe you need. The deck itself lends its to way to hit those two strategies very differently, but it hits a board state strong. You're either going to come in with such large creatures, your opponent's going to have to answer them, and then in the late game, you can back it up with that Portal to Phyrexia. Or they'll just be gone, <laughs> which is pretty sweet overall. And when we get talking about the sideboard, we get a few different options here. So up against a five color control or mono white uh, control enchantment base decks, Tranquil Throwback is a great inclusion here. You can destroy it up to a target enchantment or artifact. You can exile a graveyard and gain four life. Throwback is also just very strong against the aggro matchup as well with that four life gain. Being just a three mana three three brings some strong value. In the mid-range matchups where uh, black is basically the known thing, even in the mono black matchup, Sandstalker Mollich is a very nice inclusion for this list. Being a three mana four to eight flash, already liking the aggressive style line, already liking the flash. The bonus though, if your opponent has cast a black or blue spell this turn, you can reveal cards from the top of your library. Grab a permanent from them and put it in your hand, the rest go on the bottom. So in a uh, shell we're running against maybe mono blue tempo against mono black, Dimmer Midrange, Esper Control, Azorius in those shells, even after a Counterspell or a Fairy Mastermind kind of interaction. All which is great to flash in, have an aggressive body, and get some value to replace itself in hand. For the longer games against Control, Karn Living Legacy is in this list. What we are looking to do with Karn in those particular instances is get that plus one for the Power Stones and start utilizing that to get to the ultimate so we can ping our opponent down little by little. Uh, for any kind of board clears that we're dealing with in the mid-range matchup, uh, not so much board clears, but single target removal, cameo safekeeping, great to bring in, Terra Sunder, also along those same kind of lines, great removal piece for getting rid of enchantments and artifacts, and Cityscape Leveler. If your opponent just has something you want answered entirely, Leveler is the perfect card to bring in, answer it down, and we can even unearth it to get in an extra attack and trade that in for 8 damage haste to end the game. Dragonauts, this is Mono Green Artifacts. Please enjoy the game. Hope it's going well. Mama Emma, I hope your Saturday's going great too, friend. What happened? How were both your days today? We're gonna mulligan here. 
Getting a lot of like awkward mana cost hands. I think I'm gonna put the guide bot back. Too hot, too hot, we're all hobbits. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being a hobbits is. Uh, we're all go Gallagraders here. Need to land off the top. Giada. Esper Flyers per chance. Unfortunately, a land's not... I'm going to have to cycle the Oslith here because I need to find a land. Ugh. Yikes. Well, we might be going a quick 0-2 with the list. Cool. That's just going to be game one. Uh, Esper with Gobacons. Probably mean Terra Sunder can come in. Either that or our Tranquil Frillbacks. I might just do the Frillbacks and cut down a couple Kami's of Whispered Hope and one Kodama and a Guide Bot. And we'll run it that way. I don't know if I'm going to live in Texas anymore. No, Calper, no. Calper, you must live. Live, Calper, live. Automaton and Ozleth is a okay. Christmas coming in with the flame is here. Appreciated, friend. Playing a Dranith Runes into an Automaton here. And then we'll play in the Ozolith. Hmm. Or I could go for an Automaton again. Still on the cast is what's important. I'm going to go for the Automaton on the cast here. They do let it resolve. Let's go ahead and attack in for two. Now, next turn can get very disgusting, depending on what the opponent plays. If anything, really. Let's cast in an Ozolith the Shattered Spire. That's where our automatons are going to get bigger now. Going to have to pay that ward cost, my friend. They pay the ward. That's all right. Well, I don't think it's going to change anything I'm going to do here. I'm still going to make a 4-4. Four -four. And attack in. I'm glad we got them on the tap out, though. That was kind of good. Uh, how do I want to do this? I think I will just play on Boseju. Wandering Emperor can't do anything here. How much are you? You're two and I have five? Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and play on Kodama. Let's do a test here. All right, now we get to fetch a basic land. I'm gonna put it on Kodama here. Cycling a Rafine's Tower, sure. All right, so we've got Lethal queued in next turn. Seems pretty good. A Sarah Paragon, not sure that's gonna be the way that this is going to end. Uh, I am just going to play in a play champion here for four. Get our automaton up to a 6-6. Six, six. There's game two. I might actually bring in the mullet here. Sudden 6-6, six, six, right? Scary. The list can just make some scary critters really fast. The opponent cast a black or blue. You know what? I do like the mollusk on this one. I think I'm going to cut down a frill back. We're not going to play Karn and I'm not going to play the portal. I will bring back in a Tawashi. And I'll bring in a Kami of Whispered Hope as well. But we're going to bring in... Game 3 is going to be Sandstalker Mollus. I probably should have done this earlier. But in the opponent playing Esper, this is going to be great for us. If we catch them on a turn where they play a black or blue spell and flash in the Mollus, we're going to start finding permanents to help with keeping our hand full of cards and either hitting land drops or the big threats we want. Let's go ahead and get into Game 3. Ooh, Wormlet into a Tomat. Oh my goodness. Yes. Worm. We've got the Wormlet this time. That's pretty huge. Life gain versus life gain takes three hours. Yeah, Ghost, it can take a while. Well, let's play in our teething Wormlet here. We on Wormlet. We are on Wormlet. I think I'm still going to go for the Automaton here. Alright, 
so they did play a make disappear. That's fine. That's fine. Hey, Medizin, what's going on, friend? How you doing tonight? Welcome on in. Uh, Steel Seraph is fine. I kind of like going in Wormlet here into the patchwork. Or do I like Ozlet? You know what? It's probably going to be Ozlet here. Because suddenly I've got two 3-3s. Three and I can attack for three and potentially no trade. All right. I was going to say maybe we could force a trade, but I can I can definitely accept that. All right. Still Seraph coming down. Uh, let's go ahead and do the Patchwork Automaton. artifact comes in now suddenly we have two five fives let's chuck in 10 damage at the opponent get them down to nine and see an Aaron and giada come in gonna have to be lifelink here i want it down to 18 uh looks like i'm gonna go for gallagraders they have no responses in hand let's go ahead and use the ozla here and then attacking for 13, force a block on the Aaron and Giada. Opponent now down to two. I think that's gonna just be game three. And there we go. That is game three with Mono Green Artifacts.